Welcome back to Frank, the show which answers all of the most important questions in life. How many roads must a man walk down? Why can't you get no satisfaction? And was the moonlight really guilty or just a victim of circumstantial evidence? Today we're getting spooky. Kelly Higgins Devine has scared me on more than one occasion. <laughs> mostly by popping up from behind a desk of some description. But uh, you, you've read Tarot, mm. and uh, so you've got a, a touch of the touch. Yes, I'm a, little, I'm a little touched. Yes. <laughs> People will tell you that. <laughs> Folk have told me. Is it, does it run in the fam? Yeah, it does. Um, my, my sister's a bit spooky. Um, yeah, there are a few relatives in there who, who have the gift, I think, if you want to call it that. And are you one of the people that believe that the veil is slightly more uh, or slightly less full when you're young? Oh, absolutely. I think um, that you, I, I, I work on the theory that there are lots of dimensions and it's not ghosts per se, that, but that for me it's more like people just go on into another dimension. They're talking about being 15 or 19 or whatever they think there is now and that to me seems more likely than woo. So I kind of work on the theory that there are residuals around us and uh, that what you're tapping into is residual rather than, than anything sort of of, of substance, so to speak. And your and story... I think kids pick up on that. Yes, I would have to agree mm. with that. Your story suggests that perhaps the will doesn't die when the person does. Well, this is right. Um, I was very close to my maternal grandmother and she got a ring from her partner and she'd always said, that ring will be yours. And it was a, a garnet with lots of little diamonds around it. Anyhow, when she died, uh, there was a list of things that she had for each of her grandchildren. Anyway, this she had a, a ruby ring and a garnet. And my mother said, and <laughs> she'd left the garnet to my cousin Samantha, and she left me the ruby. And mum came out with both rings and said, which is which? She didn't know, and I did. And uh, I had that, you know, I have that moment where you think, am I going to lie about this? And oh, no. So Samantha got the one she was supposed to get. Anyhow, I was a bit miffed at that, but, you know, moved on with my life. A few years later, um, Sammy and her best friend had moved to Cairns and very tragically, uh, they were both 18, died in a car accident. And, I mean, just an awful, awful thing to happen. And they were, she was having a funeral a couple of days, obviously. They were having her funeral a couple of days later. And they sent me to Cairns to identify the body and to pack up all her gear and send it back because I'd lived in Cairns and was very familiar with the sort of how it all worked and, and that area. So I did that and as I'm packing up her stuff, I come across this ring and I put the ring on, thinking, oh, my ring now, you know, Sammy's gone. So I've put it on and about an hour later, I was walking down the street in Cairns. I looked down and one of the diamonds had fallen out. Ooh. The, the ring was perfect when I put it on. One of the diamonds and had fallen out. And how long has she been wearing it? Oh, well, she'd been wearing it for years and years. My grandmother had had it for years and years. I put it on, diamond falls out. So being one to read the signs pretty quickly, um, I've gone, ooh, I'll take that off. I get a phone call from my uncle, who are obviously deeply bereaved. And he said, Kel, can you send down Sammy's teddy, her teddy bear, and the ring that mum gave her? And I went, absolutely I can and managed to get it down to Bendigo in time for her funeral just just in time but I have no doubt that if that ring if that diamond hadn't come out I probably would have been selfish enough at that point in my life to have not made an effort to get it back to to um to Stephen that which is quite an embarrassing thing to admit but it's true and but I think that diamond falling out was a way of being told by the universe this ring is not yours do it's you not yours it, to have. It was Sammy or your grandmother or just the... Oh, no, I feel it was my grandmother. If, if I was going to feel it was anyone, I would say it was my grandmother. I never felt it was Sammy. Um, I think my grandmother was... Everyone who'd been associated with that ring in my life was dead. And, yeah. And so I, I let it go very, very quickly once that diamond had come out. Well, I'm very glad you got rid of that diamond. Yeah, but, you know, there it was. And you've got to read the signs sometimes. Not meant for you. Yes. Mm, yes. Yes. I once, uh, a long time ago when I was a child, uh, went to a friend's place with mum and um, I didn't know the reason. I'm a, I'm a kid. We're just there because that's where I should be at any given mo moment in time. Perhaps they had <laughs> chocolate. Uh, and I was downstairs playing with the dog and I went upstairs and um, these were you know, a really good friend of ours. And um, 
And they said, what were you doing downstairs? And I said, playing with Charlie the dog. And mum said, that is very cruel, young lady. How dare you? And I said, what are you talking about? And she said, Charlie's dead. Char Charlie Whoa. died a week ago. That's why we're here. So did you see Charlie? Like, I remember. I can still to this day. Corporally, you could feel him and still yeah. remember playing playing with Charlie. I can still remember. We were playing around the clotheslines. We had a little white yappy dog mm -hmm. and we were just playing around the, the clothesline. Um, and then when Jill uh, died, when she passed on, uh, she sent me his collar. Oh. There are so many folk tales about, yeah. about people visiting their loved ones after they've been killed suddenly. Mm. Sue Ann Post, the great comedian, had a story about that too. Her dad died in the Granville train disaster of 1977, I think it was, when dozens of people were killed by two trains crashing into one another. And she lived in the Blue Mountains with her family and she had to go home. And it was her job to tell her little four-year-old sister that dad had been killed. And then she said, um, she went into her sister's bedroom, according to Sue Ann, and she said, I've, I've got to tell you something about Dad. And she said, it's okay, he's just been here. He's told me everything's going to be all right and not to worry about him. There are so many folk tales mm. about that along those lines where people appear to give a reassuring message. Yeah. My sister and I had the same dream about a cousin who died and we separately told our mother about this dream we had about him in the exact same setting and saying to both of us separately in these dreams, don't worry about me, I'm fine. And we told her separately, and then she she was a bit, a little bit freaked out that we'd had the same dream, the exact same dream. How are you going to haunt us, Kelly Higgins Devine, if you oh, go first? I'm going to make your lives a nightmare. <laughs> <laughs> You'll be back, getting an exorcist. Standing back at a distance here. I mean, if you're the Bilbo Baggins of the show, she's definitely the Frodo. Has anyone else seen the, the Tolkien-esque overtones of Kelly's story here? Coveting the ring. Yes. Uh, and, and design my precious, my precious, when mm. she shouldn't. Yeah, Perhaps I'm more Gollum, really, aren't I? Eventually, <laughs> you're giving it away is essentially throw it into the fires of Mordor. <laughs> yes. Which is not a way, nice... No, does that I, mean, I better stop there. Who does that I, make you? I, uh, Don't oh, say Aragorn, whatever you do. Interested onlooker? <laughs> <laughs> Hobbit 2. <laughs> Hobbit 2. <laughs> well, thank you both very much for taking time out of your busy radio schedules to be here today. Uh, my name's Kat Davidson. I hope you've enjoyed the show today. If you are in Brisbane and at any stage get a little shiver down the back of your neck, it's Richard Feidler's fault. My name's Kat Davidson. <laughs> the program is Frank. Thanks for hanging out with us.